Great morning. Let's look and see what the topic of the day is. What is the topic of the day? topic of the day. Okay, so what we have this morning, the ghost dance. The journey. And sustenance. Tree people. How we're being fed. It's going to take me a second on this one. Okay. We had uh, black elk. Wavoka, and he talked about the ghost dance, and he said that this was a protection, and he was talking basically um, about uh, that basically, you know, no matter what happens, that you're safe, okay? Um, so basically, this was... Um, teaching of Christ that um, we're eternal and if we leave okay we're always sustained by the universe okay no matter what happens okay even if we leave the form we are sustained we are fine we are eternal okay so you know, this is basically what the ghost dance is, that uh, no matter what happens, you are safe. You're going to be fine. You are, you know, we are not a corporeal form, ghost dance, okay? We are spirit. We are spirit, and spirit is eternal. Even if you leave this form, that energy, maybe you will transform going through something transformative, but that energy, that beingness that you are is eternal, okay? So this is what it is, you know, go your journey, do our journey, do what we, what we need to do. If we need to leave, we leave, we, we go where we, where we have to go, but things are eternal, okay? Ghost still has life. Okay, when we're out of form, we still have life. And it's like talking about, you know, Holy Spirit, the, the, the Holy Ghost, okay. Uh, continuing to have, be fed by the universe, okay. Be fed by the universe. And um, don't be fearful, okay. Now, when they first made it, they, they would wear... Uh, Native American, when they talked about the ghost dance, they would wear um, the shirts with 
symbols on them, and they saw them as protection. Okay. Um, I'm just going to look, I think. Oh, no, I don't have that book with me. I don't have it in here. I was going to look to see if I had the one. No, I don't have the one here on the ghost dance. I have that at home. I do have a book on Wavoka and the ghost dance. And there were people that were for it. And then there were those that were against it. Um, I wanted to see if they have anything in here from it. Um, Okay, I was looking to see Okay, I'm just going to pick something out here Okay, with self-healing, people must let Wakan Tanka and the helpers heal them first so they will know how healing works. Then this understanding can be sent out from them to the rest of creation. Long ago, people knew how to do it, but they've forgotten the way. We can be hollow bones for healing the world just as we can be bones for curing, healing, and helping one another. Does all of the fault of the present situation lie with human beings? Only the human beings have the power to unbalance the earth. And when they unbalance the earth, they unbalance themselves. It is like that thing the Australian natives throw that comes back at them, the boomerang. Wakan Tanka made the earth so it does everything to take care of itself. Everything fulfills its role. Ants, worms, vultures, wolves, pebbles, sand. When we damage any of these, or the earth itself, we damage ourselves. We cannot use them up or waste and destroy them without paying a terrible price for it. But people are doing this, and it's coming back on us all. Grandmother Earth is crying out about it. She is shaking the land with earthquakes, more and more to tell us how she feels and to get our attention. Wakan Tanka told me that the Thunder Being will be sending great floods to show us the great cleansing that needs to go on within people. Our children will cry more than we will for this, and during our visits, Wakan Tanka has told me that their crying will be long and very loud. You have said Wakan Tanka does not punish us. How then do you think of natural disasters as something that teaches us lessons? Do you think that if we believed and prayed there would be no more earthquakes or floods? Fool's Crow did not like my question. I could see his face that he was toying with the idea of not answering it. For a moment I found myself wondering whether he had thought his position through. I was wrong. All he needed was time. In the Garden of Eden, there were no earthquakes, he said, but Wakan Tanka changed all of that. Since then, natural disasters have always happened. So what does that tell us? Don't build your teepee in a creek bed or on the side of a volcano. As we continue to discuss the matter of power in terms of something given to everyone, Fool's Crow made it clear that without the addition of spiritual power, man's tendency is to use his natural power for himself.
and while he accomplishes outstanding things on the earthly plane, he nevertheless tends to subordinate and misuse the rest of creation, until, of course, he at last sees he created a monster that has turned and will soon devour him. The higher powers teach the person with appended spiritual power not to do this. The truth of Fool's Crow's belief is plainly before us today as we experience the consequences of misuse. They threaten us, encompass us, are in our very midst. While the first Earth Day was held 20 years ago, the scientist Barry Commoner alerted us to hideous environmental costs of our technological development. Okay. So these are, you know, things that we have to do. Keep things in balance. Uh, keep yourself in balance. Uh, go forward. Um, So we are eternal. Energy is eternal. But we need to be respectful of what is here. Be respectful where you are. Like I said, if you live in sacredness and you see the land as sacred and you see your food as sacred, you see the breath of air as sacred, then you'll be more willing to take care of it. Okay, and also take care of the temple, your physical form that houses the spirit, that allows one to interact uh, with this plane of existence. Okay, um, so basically, uh, let's go forward, you know, understand that while everything is eternal in nature, it doesn't mean that one should abuse it. Don't abuse yourself, your physical form. Don't abuse others. Okay? Um, know that you're eternal. Know that life is eternal. And have respect for it. See it as, again, sacred. Everything comes out of the divine is in part and parcel of it. If you respect God, you should respect the planet and you should respect all of creation because all of that is a part of God. Wherever you are at is holy ground. So respect it. Okay? Whatever you see that has life has holiness in it. Even though we may see... Um, shadow substance, uh, know that shadow within itself doesn't have a lot of power. It thinks it has power, but it doesn't have a lot of power. Um, all the power in the end comes from the divine is, the great arbiter, okay? And that is why there is karma. That's why there has to be karma, because of the perfection and the nature of of its beingness okay that's why people cannot get away with anything they may think they're fooling everyone they may even try to fool themselves but you cannot you cannot fool the divine is okay <laughs> and so it will right itself as things go forward Okay, so much love and light. Thank you for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this, please give a thumbs up. I do so appreciate it so the channel will get seen. Um, if people don't give a thumbs up, your, your channel doesn't get seen. It has something to do with algorithms. So if you enjoy this channel, please give a thumbs up. It is so important. Um, otherwise, your, your videos get buried and uh, people just don't see them. Okay, that's the reality of it. So thanks for tuning in. Hello, Mr. Max. He says, I could see you're just about done, so I'm going to come up on your lap now. He is so smart. Are you a smart boy? 
You know when I'm finished with the reading? Yes. Yes, he says, I'm respectful, and I wait until you're done. And then I come up, and then I want the love. Then I want to share the love. It's all about sharing the love, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, no, he's a very good boy. He, when he sees that I'm in the middle of a reading, he'll respectfully wait. But the minute I'm coming to the conclusion of it, here he comes. He says, I just want to be loved. And it, it's time for him to go O-U-T to P-O-T-T-Y. And if I say anything, he'll be jumping up and getting crazy uh, to, to be taken right now. Uh, and it is chilly out here this morning. It's like 48. <laughs> So the mornings can be quite um, chilly here, but it's supposed to warm up to 81 today. So, yeah, craziness. So anyway, yeah, Miss, Miss Maymay doesn't like to go out in the morning early like this because it is cold. <laughs> she does not like the cold. So I'm going to leave this here so I can take them out because it's, watch this, pee-pee potty time. Mr. Max, is it pee pee potty time? Go out, go make pee pee, make potty. Yeah, is it time? It's time. Yeah. Have to go out, go pee pee, go potty. Yeah, yeah. He said, Yeah, mom, pee pee potty time. That's what it is, it's pee pee potty time. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Let's go, mom. Okay, so let me get this, let me get this out. Oh. <clears throat> Miss May May heard it too. She's got her head up like this and said, "Did you say pee pee potty? Did you say go out?" Yeah, I'm ready. You ready, May May? Go out. Come on, May May. That's it. Get up. Yeah, get up. Get up. Come on. You gotta interrupt your booty sleep. Time to go out. And go pee pees. Okay. So let me take these two critters out there so they can. Uh, so they can do good kid things. Yeah. And I'll see you online. <laughs> okay, Mimi.